Hello and welcome back to the Air Armoury, I'm JRH and today I'm looking at the SMK XS 1918 air SMK XS 1918. Now, first of all, the manufacturer. This gun is made by, or at least branded as, SMK or Sports Marketing. Now, I've spoken about them briefly in other videos as I've reviewed their V2 and QB78 Deluxe rifles, and I'll put links in the description below to those if you're interested. Now, SMK are a British based uh, manufacturer and distributor of um, air guns and a wide range of related accessories. Um, and whilst they are UK based, these guns are actually Chinese made. Um, and whilst I'll talk about price a bit later on, they generally compete at the lower end of the market. Now the XS1918 is part of their popular XS series. Uh, and it's 19-18 rather than 1918, as it's not any kind of year indicator or anything like that. And this is actually the same gun as the XS19, except for slightly different sights, which I'll talk about later on. So, except for the sights, this is also, I suppose, a review of the XS19. So, let's take a closer look. This is a spring piston brake barrel rifle. Uh, despite though stripping and re-greasing it, this gun has a very stiff lock-up, so it really needs a bit of a whack on the barrel to open it. Um, it's designed to be a full power uh, rifle capable of hunting, vermin control as well as plinking. And it's 43 inches or 109 centimeters long with a 17 inch or 43 centimeter barrel and it weighs 6.2 pounds or 2.83 kilograms. Now it's a good length but I personally don't like the weight of it. I think it feels lighter than it actually is uh, so I think the balance isn't very good. I'd prefer to a gun to be a little on the heavy side rather than the light side but I do own guns weighing less than this which I find considerably easier to hold steady on the target. Now the metal parts are all blued steel, uh, this one isn't in the best condition with some rust and pitting which I assure you is as a result of poor treatment by the previous owner rather than myself. It does have a certain amount of plastic on it such as the trigger guard, end cap and the rear and front sights and I have said before I particularly dislike plastic on air guns but at least the trigger is metal on this one. Uh, in terms of markings it's the SMK logo on the top there and then on the side of the barrel it has the uh, model which is SMK uh, 1918 and the calibre uh, this one is in 2.2 but you can also get it in 177 and like with all other SMK guns I've come across it's not serial numbered. The stock is quite nice, it's made of beech and is finished reasonably well in a satin finish. Uh, I've certainly seen a lot worse finishes on SMK guns but that being said I have actually seen better as well. Uh, it's quite nicely shaped with a raised Monte Carlo cheek piece at the back and a decent rubber butt pad. Uh, the only thing that's really missing is some checkering, which I know a lot of people like, uh, but it doesn't bother me too much. What I do particularly like about the stock though is that the fore end extends far enough so that it completely covers the cocking mechanism, which I do like on brake barrel guns. And overall I'd say that the stock is actually one of the better elements of the gun. The trigger is single stage. Uh, it does have one type of adjustment. Uh, which I believe is for either sear engagement or pull weight but I'm not quite sure as I don't have the instruction manual and no matter how much I adjusted it, it didn't really seem to make a lot of difference. Um, it's a pretty standard trigger for this kind of gun. It's got a certain amount of creep but it breaks relatively crisply. Um, it's certainly usable and then just in front of the trigger you can see there you've got the safety catch. Now it's a manual safety when it's back towards the trigger like that it's safe and when it's pushed forward it's ready to fire. Yeah, it's nicely positioned to flick off with your trigger finger and it's also marked with S and F for safe and fire on the bottom of the trigger guard. Now this isn't my favourite type of safety 
um, as it just blocks the trigger rather than actually disconnecting it, uh, which is fine, it's a lot how a lot of safeties work, but I really don't trust this one. Now it works absolutely fine now, but when I first got this gun it did have issues. Um, yeah, when I first got it the spring which keeps the safety tensioned was bent and therefore the safety didn't work. These are photos of before and after I repaired it. I can understand the external parts of a gun being in bad shape if it hasn't been well looked after, but it worries me that an internal part like the safety spring would get damaged. Now the rifle comes with fibre optic sights, um, which as I've said is the difference between this and the XS19. Now I haven't actually seen an XS19 so I'm not sure if that gun has open sights, they're just not fibre optic, or whether it doesn't have open sights at all. But anyway, back to this gun. Uh, the rear sight is adjustable for windage and elevation and is removable and the front sight is just a standard fixed fibre optic bar uh, although at least it should be um, this one has unfortunately had the fibre optic part broken off but it is just about usable uh, the sight picture isn't bad but unfortunately these sights themselves are uh, the rear sight is made of very cheap plastic and feels very flimsy and I have to have it raised an awful lot for shooting even over short distances or that may be to do with the power which I'll come back to later and there are no nice audible clicks when you're making the adjustments. Uh, the front sight for me a big bulky plastic front sight moulded to the barrel like this is a cardinal sin. Uh, my Remington Express also has this but it's such a better gun that I can just about overlook it. Uh, the only benefit to sights like this is that they can be used as a cocking aid but personally I don't think that's enough of a justification for its sheer ugliness. Now as well as the open sights it has a nice long 11mm dovetail rail for mounting a scope. I'm now going to test the accuracy using the open sights and I'm going to be firing 10 pellets at one of these 14 centimetre square targets from a range of about 12 metres and I'll be doing that using these 14.6 grain uh, Crossman domed pellets. Well, to slightly amend the great Dirty Harry quote, I know what you're thinking, did he fire 10 shots or only 9? Well, I did fire 10 shots, but there's only 9 on the target, so Christ knows where the other one went. Uh, I'll have to watch back the footage to see if I can tell where it went. As you can see, the pellets are all over the shop. Now with this grouping of 5 here, I could happily forgive that from a springer with open sights, but the rest of them are just not forgivable. Now I, like any other self-respecting shooter, wouldn't have been happy to just leave it at that. So I did do another accuracy test. And whilst all of the pellets did go on the target, the overall accuracy was actually even worse. Now mounting a scope will definitely improve the accuracy, but if a scope comes with open sights, I expect some kind of accuracy from them without having to instantly resort to a scope. Now really I think I can tell enough from the open sights that I'm not actually going to bother with a scoped accuracy test. I am however going to test its power, I've already got my chronograph out ready um, and again I'm going to be using those same 14.6 grain Crossman domed pellets, um, the same ones I use for the accuracy test obviously. Uh, before I do though, in the interest of fairness to the gun, uh, I think I should state that the figures given by SMK in their catalogue are that when new this gun in 2.2 should be up to 610 feet per second although I suspect that is with a lot lighter pellets uh, so just bear that in mind when I test mine uh, what I have actually just noticed though on the same page of the catalogue is the XS19 and that does look like it has open sights uh, but they're just not fibre optic so let's now test the power of this gun Oh dear, so this apple seems to have fallen a long way from the tree. I had a spread of 26.3 feet per second, which I can live with, 
uh, the highest shot though being only 379.9 feet per second with the lowest down to just 353.6 uh, and that averaged over 10 pellets gives a power of just 4.33 foot pounds so this particular gun has very low power certainly much less than it would have left the factory with uh, which might at least start to explain some of the accuracy issues although certainly not all of them uh, it probably needs a good clean and re-lubricating plus either a new mainspring or piston seal now I should probably strip it down and have a look but as you may have realised already I don't particularly like this gun so frankly I can't be bothered to waste my time and money fixing it up in any meaningful way so there you've seen the SMK XS1918 now SMK often get a bad rap as being a cheap manufacturer of poor quality guns uh, and whilst that certainly is true of some of them, certainly not all of them but is this one of the better ones? well in my opinion no it definitely isn't now I've never come across an air gun that I didn't enjoy shooting but I think this is probably the closest I've ever come now I've actually found this review quite difficult to make as generally all the stuff I review is things that I've bought because I've liked it uh, and therefore rate it highly and do a positive review whereas I think this has been probably my first truly negative review now I wanted to make quite a quick review of this gun so admittedly I've only put probably just under 200 pellets through this gun and it certainly doesn't help that this one has been abused in the past um, and it's got low power and broken bits but that's still been able to give me a feel for the gun and draw some conclusions and I have to say I really don't like this gun and wouldn't be particularly interested in trying one in better condition. Now this is sold as a full size full power rifle for hunting and pest control um, and I have actually read some glowing reviews of it but for me um, whilst it almost looks the part it certainly doesn't feel it. With regard to price the Airgun World Buyer's Guide 2016 gives the RRP as $159.95 and whilst that isn't breaking the bank um, there are a number of guns out there of a similar type that are much better but for around the same kind of money. In fact I actually have two of them in my collection uh, both of which I would uh, greatly recommend over the SMK. The first one being my Remington Express. Now this is also $159.95 but it's a far superior rifle and this also comes with a scope and mounts. And the BSA Meteor. Now this is an older model but the RRP for a new one is $165. I paid £35 for this rifle and I certainly wouldn't have paid any more for it. Now you may be forgiven for thinking if I don't like it why did I buy it? That's a good question. Um, I've actually got no use for it as it is, but I'm going to use it in a project that I have planned, which you'll see in an upcoming video. Uh, I just needed a rifle that was a cheap 2-2 brake barrel, and this was the first one I came across that fitted my criteria. Now, I hope you found this video useful. Uh, if so, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the Air Armoury. And until next time, keep your arms in the air.